Hello everyone, my name is Monica Gleberman, and you're listening to Silence On Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we're at the Toronto International Film Festival to talk about the premiere of a movie called Muru, which is about a police sergeant who is forced to choose between his job and his people when the government pulls off an armed raid in a community. So to talk about the film, we have director Tara Pakai and actor Jay Ryan. I just want to start off, this movie, to me, I've been covering a ton of films for during this festival. It's very different. And I wanted to initially ask you guys why you wanted to be a part of this film. And in particular, when it starts off right away, it's very clear this is not a telling of a story. It's a response of something that happened years earlier. Why was it important to make that distinction to start off the film? Uh, Well, I mean, firstly, T brought me on. He's the writer-director. So it's his baby, his project. Um, But I mean, I wanted to come on firstly because... I've been looking for a New Zealand film to enter with, um, you know, um, just hit 40 and uh, I've been waiting for the right New Zealand feature film to come along um, that that holds gravity and weight and um, and has something strong to say. And so obviously T script came through and, uh, it, you know, it, it brought me back home um, very willingly. Uh, it's a very important story um, around a time in our nation that, uh, is, is very murky and it still holds a lot of, um, I guess, questions and people still hold um, kind of attitudes towards it that were painted very strongly in the media um, with what the Crown's narrative was and why they say they raided these people. So for me, it was a chance to um, jump on, on, on T's story and help change the narrative in, in, in a different light um, that hopefully brings some healing and understanding. I've been angling towards Jay for quite a while, so I was very pleased to get something, put something in front of him that would entice him. There was there was the hope that we would have Jay Ryan and Manu Bennett versus Cliff Curtis deep in the valley in the bush. I thought, it was, you know, that that, that trio is, is worthy of big screen. But beyond the industry ideas, why is it so important to take people deep inside a valley that is so remote and has been inflicted with such trauma is because what Jay said, it's important to widen out, widen out beyond the headline with truth, truth and context and bring some real humanity into this headline that has marred and colored people's opinions back home for so long. And so there was always a a cinematic opportunity to create, will reveal, reveal the real relationships inside this valley, inside this tribe, Tamaiti and his people. And conversely, to demask power that corrupts, a government that became so comfortable in pushing this red button and sending in the troops again and again. So that's also why there's a distinction to take the story beyond the events of a single day because this behavior has been repeated and that's the the heartbeat that calls to Jay, to Manu, to myself, to Tame, to Cliff, to everybody, to Simon, is that this is, this is, this film is about prevention. This is ensuring that this day never happens to Tuhoi again. And I wanted to hear from both of you, how do you view Taffy versus Gallagher? Do you feel that they both have a lot of similarities because I feel like they're both trying to protect things or following what they think is correct, but yeah. they're on opposite sides, but then they do kind of blur. So I want to ask both of you how you feel about the two different characters. Obviously, Jay, you play Gallagher, but like how how that relationship works out throughout the movie. Yeah, I think it's a beautiful juxtaposition between the two characters. Um, you know, Cliff's uh, character, Taffy, who we follow throughout the movie, you know, he's caught between um, duty towards his badge as a local police officer and duty towards his whanau, his family in this tight-knit community. Um, And Gallagher, in a way, is on a a similar journey. And uh, maybe it's not as personal, obviously, because he's working under the system as a soldier, basically. But his duty when he goes in is definitely towards his badge. But, um, you know, throughout it, 
throughout the process of, of the film and the events, his moral compass definitely gets flipped upside down. And um, I think he starts to feel like, hang on a minute, um, what am I doing? Not perhaps to my people, but people from my country, from my nation. And he starts to realize and see these people as fellow humans, as opposed to um, target one, two, three, and four. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess there's almost a flip where Gallagher, his journey becomes um, a bit more similar and sort of boils up a bit more where Taffy's is, is sort of already there when we hit into the film. The stakes are very high for Taffy immediately. He knows where this is going, whereas Gallagher is kind of goes into this very blindly and um, yeah, the events start unfolding and then his eyes begin to open and he realizes the situation that he's in and the mistakes that he's making. Well, I felt like um, with Gallagher in particular, when we meet him, it's very one, two, three, right? Because he's that's his job. And a lot of it is very disconnected, right? And as he starts meeting these people and you're chasing everyone down and you're meeting Rusty and all of this action's going on, you do see changes where he's like, mm, maybe I shouldn't just blindly follow what people are telling me. So I found that arc to be very interesting and you do such a great job of showing kind of a slow progression of change. And I feel like in a way, and like, I, can, I guess I'll call you T. <laughs> I don't know if that's right or not, but I feel yeah, like- call him T. <laughs> I call him T. Uh, that represents us. I feel like that represents people that don't know what happens because we, or people that might have thought they knew the story are Gallagher, right? And as we start to learn, we might start slowly opening our, our eyes. So I wanted to ask, you, I guess, a kind of similar question about it, but how that relationship kind of forms, is that us? Well, I love your answer to your question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, putting the writer's hat on, um, it's, it's really important to go beyond the distinctions of black and white. And in a story like this, I really wanted to create characters on our chessboard who, yes, they are defined by diff their different sides on the chessboard. Each person's loyalty is tested. And then they reach this moment of clarity. And through this moment of clarity, they each recognize where they now stand and whether the ground beneath them has fallen eroded away from them or whether they're still standing on solid ground. And so that, that's definitely something artistically that uh, guided the concept and the way that we shape each character. Um, are, we, are we Gallagher? Do we come, do we enter a world we thought we knew and then go deeper into a world that becomes unknown to us where we refine ourselves, where we redefine ourselves in our moral compass? Absolutely. Uh, so I, you know, even, even Taffy, he, he has this blind spot. So he's missed this this, this camp training because his eyes are fixed on the health of his father. So even though he is duty bound, this little blind spot has, has happened, has developed just inside his own house. And with Gallagher, well, he's, he's got such a, 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 a dedication to the playbook. And then suddenly the orders that are propelling him forward with all his capabilities and this newfound responsibility, well, that starts to creep away as well as he enters into the valiant and it's not a valley, it's a community. And so I, I love the way that Jay has with so much nuance and so, you know, small detailed progression brought Gallagher to this point of clarity. And um, yeah, everyone shares something, but all their positioning is different. And I'm just excited by everybody's performance and the fact that uh, people are understanding it. It's resonating with people, uh, even though it's was created from so far away. Yeah, and I think all of us are talking about it. I know when I saw it and a bunch of us, we were all kind of conversing about it. And did you know about this? And I didn't know about this. And what did you know? And we're all kind of, you know, going back and forth with it. Um, you know, I'm interested- The only one who doesn't change is Tommy E.T. I was gonna say- <laughs> <laughs> You know, well, Tommy E.T. is Tommy at the start and all the way through the end, his, his art need not transform. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm curious too, you know, with this film, why was it important to, I, I guess like the way that you bookend it, and I don't want to give away any like thing about the ending, 
But with the beginning, how you mentioned that this is not a reenactment, this is a response. Then at the end, it's about, there's a moment of forgiveness. Why are those two elements extremely important for uh, you to have put into the movie? And then Jay, for you as an actor, when you're reading Gallagher and you read that, that that's going to be in the film and this is where we're going as a reaction and we're ending with forgiveness. How do you prepare, especially when you're playing someone like Gallagher? Mm, great questions. Um, I'll try and do this as briefly as possible. The uh, which, which probably won't be so brief. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, if you, what I really wanted to do for the STG force and the police force, these are people that we live alongside in every country. But artistically, if I can create a seed of doubt inside a person who is armed, who has a uniform on, who feels that they are looking at a target and then they see a person, then they see a child, then they see a grandson, then they see a nephew or a niece or a daughter, then, then I feel like my job is, our job has been fulfilled. And this, this film is, I mean, it's called drama, action, action thriller, but it really is, it really is a joint effort to ensure that this day never happens again. And, and that's the point of it all. And um, that's why, yes, we framed it it's a response as opposed to the depiction of a single day. This single day has already repeated too many times. We must not let that repeat again. And then also when you can see the humanity and the impact on that person in the, in the final frame, that's hopefully when uh, an officer of the law hesitates. Yeah, I mean, for me, that whole thing, when I first read the script of Gallagher, you know, he's, he's a foot soldier and he's placed up into this point of leadership um, very quickly to be the face of this raid. And unknowingly, he enters into this valley of people, of children, um, and until he's on ground and he's face to face with these people, he doesn't really realize the implications that are about to unfold. And so I like that when I read it, it felt like Gallagher would be the eyes for many people, especially internationally, um, going through the story. And as Gallagher's kind of compass unfolds and he starts to make decisions on a human basis rather than on, a, on an ordered level within a system that many Western countries around the world are entangled in, whether you're on the side of the law or a citizen, um, yeah, I thought that was really important and I thought I could help show that, you know, in between the moments of dialogue and, and hopefully uh, audiences will be able to latch on to something and, and, um, and be in the boots of Gallagher. Yeah. T's done a really great job of, of putting all these threads um, in a really high stakes situation, but keeping everybody very human and very real. Um, so yeah, I, I, hopefully that, can, that, that changes um, people's perception. But also, you know, there is a little, from my point of view, playing um, a man of law or whatever, you know, there is a bit of empathy there. Mm -hmm. These cops are put in these high stakes situations and quite often they don't have time to think they haven't had the correct training or support because they're based in a system that's outcome, outcome basis, put that red stamp and yes, they're guilty. And yes, we did our job. Um, so, yeah, I hopefully it opens up conversations um, on both sides of the fence. I mean, just this morning, there was another headline of a young black man in London who's been shot unarmed. You know, so we see this far too often. Um, and so films like this um, are going to be continued to be made until things change. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully that starts to happen because people are yelling and um, it's still happening. Yeah, and uh, you do a great job because I do think there there were moments when I was watching, I was like, Gallagher, take a breath. <laughs> I'm like, like yeah. hold on. And I think that's the point, right? We're watching and we're going, what are you doing? Like, give a minute, like, you know, look at what's happening because mm -hmm. we're seeing stuff you're not seeing, you know? So I yeah. do think that there are many uh, points that that happens in the film. And I loved seeing the change that happens with him. Um, and for, I feel cool calling him T, T and for the, um, uh, the way that you wrote it, I thought was just so 
beautifully done. And I love the forgiveness and like, and it's such a big portion that we're not here to attack anybody. We're not here to, we're here to show you something that happened, educate you and show you that with love and forgiveness that hopefully that's how things will move forward. So um, I only have like probably one more minute, but I want to ask you guys, you know, what are you excited for people to see, you know, when it's out of the festival, hopefully in theaters all over um, for fans to come see and what do you hope? I think we kind of touched on it, but what do you hope they gain out of it after they watch it? Um, Well, I mean, it's a very unique experience to firstly see inside the world of Tuhoi. Um, Tuhoi, uh, an iwi or tribe of New Zealand of um, how indigenous people of Maori and uh, it's a very unique iwi and the unique people and a, it's a magical beautiful place in the middle of the North Island of New Zealand so you get to see this vast forest which is almost prehistoric I mean when we were shooting in, in that forest you know those trees they go for miles and those branches mm-hmm. tangled forever so many stories in that place. Um, so yeah, it's a privilege for me as an actor and, and a, a Pakia European New Zealander to be um, invited into this place, but also for an international audience to be invited in and, um, and see these people um, and, and see their, their home um, is, is an honor and a thrill. Um, yeah. But I mean, hopefully they come in and, and see a story that resonates with them too, because even though we're all the way down in little old New Zealand, um, we have a lot of the same problems that, that go on in terms of race and power struggles as, as many other places in the world. So I think a lot of people can identify with many of these characters in this film and um, hopefully it'll open some eyes. Just to add everything that Jay said, that's what I subscribe to you as well but if this is your entry point into New Zealand if this is if this is the doorway um I you you will see the spirit of Tuhoi Mm. and you'll see a cast and a crew and storytellers and Tamaiti at the peak of their powers you know we put everything we could into this this cinematic uh depiction response and and <laughs> I know that everyone's expectations are going to get blown away because of the power of the performances and the cast and also the unique shaping of the story. It's, it's unconventional, but hopefully it's going to be something that leaves audiences, if it is their introduction to New Zealand, with brand new understanding and understand the, the spirit of Tuhoi and want to pick us all up and hug us as tightly as they can. Kia ora. Yeah, for sure. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you guys did such a good job. Like I said, it was such a good movie and I had seen so many. And this one, I was like, I have to make work. I have to talk to them today because I didn't want you guys to go back and not be able to talk to you. So I just thank you for making it. Jay, you're fantastic. I love that you actually didn't have to do an American accent. Yes, Ooh. finally, <laughs> we get to hear you talk with like with an accent. Um, so I, I just loved all of it. Uh, the action, the love that's in there. Um, and you know, just every shot that you did um, and the forgiveness with there and the learning. So I thank both of you because it's fantastic. Tell wow. us. It is Thanks a good so movie. Much. I'm being <laughs> it, you know, it's strange for you to come out of a movie these days and, and, and have it sit with you for days after and have imagery and thoughts and uh, many things come up. You really get your money's worth on this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a good job. <laughs> <laughs> it's true it's true because i've watched it i watched it twice and literally i cannot stop thinking about it so that's why i was like i have to talk to them today i was like if jay's in the in the hotel i will talk to him in the hotel like <laughs> wherever he is like i had to talk to you guys so i really appreciate it and i just want to thank you so much for the work that you did and for putting this out there and i think it's going to change a lot of people's lives and i do think it's very universal and i think it's kind of like a must watch for everybody mm-hmm. really so just thank you so much hope you guys enjoyed listening about the movie maru the film is currently screening now at the toronto international film festival so make sure you check out the website and buy a ticket to go screen it don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts and head over to our youtube channel hit subscribe so you're updated on all of our video content